Hello everybody, it's Nim and welcome back to my channel. Today's Friday and we are back with our Red Tail Zoo. And today we are working on our habitat for our Caviar Dwar Cayman. Now, I hope I pronounced that correctly because I keep forgetting the name. I really apologize. I just, I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. Anyways, guys, one of you guys suggested this animal to me and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do this because this animal looks so darn cute. They're like little tiny crocodile lizard creatures. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Probably should have researched that. But they looked cute in the picture in the Zoopedia. So I was like, you know what? Um, we're gonna do this. And so they're like, I'm just gonna call them tiny crocodiles. So like these tiny crocodiles, they are in need of water, they are in need of land. And luckily I had this perfect um, like puddles of water. That still needed an animal and I wasn't sure which animal I should put there. So today we are putting the dwarf caiman there. Just gonna call it that. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm really not sure. But before we start on any of these of the actual habitats, we are going to make a little food court because it had been a while since we placed shops in this zoo. Like the last shops that we actually placed, I believe were um, well, like our big, big food courts. And I say, big it's not really big it's like four shops that was um opposite our black bear habitat and then right next to the hyenas we had some little bit of a food plaza thing but here we have a general and big food plaza we have four uh, stands with food and five stands with drinks and we're just gonna build that plus we have like this entire terrace which is, you know, has like a roof over it and it looks out upon the water. We're all going to build that. So don't worry, we are going to go there in a few minutes. I didn't involve or like put any of the building process in there because I have that in other videos and you guys all know how to build a square. I mean, like that's not interesting. It's just a square and a roof. So like don't bother with it. And otherwise this video would have been very long because I had amazing footage. I had like almost three hours of footage. And I'm actually really proud that I managed to put it in like a 15 minute video because that's not often that I succeed in doing that. Usually my videos are a lot longer and I just try for around the 15 minute mark. Did quite well, quite proud of myself. Also, really apologize if you can hear any kids screaming outside my window. I don't know why they're doing that. But if you can, um, just don't focus on that, just focus on the video. Like that's important. So here we are trying to build our food court. Now this took, uh, I don't want to say it took like a little while to figure out. And it was just thinking about what I wanted and what I wanted it to look like. And it's a bit of an odd shape right now, but in the end it will work together. So we're going to give it this really uh, elevated high roof. And I actually think that it works quite well and I'm really happy with how it looks. So then we are putting this little railing in underneath and we are putting it straight ahead. So it's not directly on like on the floor or on the ground that's not necessary because we are going to put some rock work on there just to make it look more i don't know like better as a matter of fact and i'm actually really happy with the way it turned out now um, one thing i should have realized is that i probably should have leveled out the terrain before i did any of this because i wanted this big plaza here yeah, um, that didn't work mainly because, you know, it's rainy and flat, so the benches and picnic benches aren't really going to fit on there. But it, it's a thought that counts and I actually think that it looks really nice and I'm quite happy with it. I mean, and that's coming from someone that is very, very, very critical. I'm really happy with it. I'm glad, you know, the way it turned out. All these rocks accidentally used a tiger rock here instead of the temperate rock or the tropical rock. But I actually think that it works out really well. It's a little bit paler, it's a little bit less color, more more towards the gray. But I really like the way that it looks and I'm really quite happy with it. And I will probably be using that rock more often in this zoo because it looks so good. And you can't even, like I've told you it's a tiger rock, but otherwise you guys wouldn't have seen it. And I know that to be true because I didn't see it until I was like, huh. This rock looks a little bit paler because in a moment I'm going to have to temper it and the tiger rock next to each other. And I was like, hmm, strange, what's up with this? And now you guys know what's up with it. So again here, look, we have this amazing view out on the, on the boat ride and the waterfall. If I press play, the waterfall will appear in the background. But 
I don't really pr press play a lot anymore in the zoo because the piece counts. I mean, and I have like a pretty darn good computer, like my computer's ridiculously well. And it's really good and I'm really happy with it. But even my computer lags at some point and I think that probably has to do with the amount of rocks that I have in the zoo. It is so, so much and it's like ridiculous. Now in the actual habitat I did try to limit piece count and not by using less items because I'm not a gal that uses less items. Um, I just removed the rocks that were underground anyways. And I think that I will probably have to go do that in this entire zoo. And maybe then the frame drop won't be that, that, that bad because sometimes it just freezes and I'm really terrified that my game will crash because I have the tendency of not saving my game. That's a really bad habit. I should save more often, but I never save like in any game. Even in like story-based games like, you know, uh, Life is Strange or Cyberpunk, I almost never save just because I forget. Should really put an alarm in there that says like, oh, save now, save now. Anywho. So yeah, I should probably save more often and make sure that the rocks underground are, you know, removed because you don't see them and they do pay take up, you know, space and they are processing and that's quite a shame to be honest. But oh well, like we'll figure it out. Like I'm, I'm very much convinced that most of you guys won't be able to open the zoo once it is done and it's uploaded to the gallery and I want to, you know, try to fix that for most of you so in the end i will probably um go in or well in the end probably in one of my breaks that's coming up i will probably go in and i will remove all the underground rocks and other bits just you know so you guys can actually more easily open this zoo file i hope and I, in the end, I will also delete half of the animals that are in here because there are so many animals in here. I think at this moment we have around eight jaguars. We have, what would it be, like already 20 hyenas. We have 35 pea files. We have a lot of gharials, like it's insane. Also tortoises, we have so many of them. And the pygmy hippos there are with 12 in habitat right now. That's insane. So... For the cinematics and, you know, just my personal pleasure, I do enjoy putting a lot of animals in this zoo. But once I will be uploading it to the Steam uh, Workshop, I will be making sure that, you know, half the animals are away from this zoo. So maybe not the p-files because I do like a lot of p-files, but, you know, jaguars. I'll make sure there are like two or three in one habitat instead of eight. I'll probably delete the parents and, you know, leave the cups in. That's my idea for now. But we'll see how it goes and when the zoo actually is done. Maybe, you know, all the animals will die because it takes so long to finish the zoo, I'm afraid. I mean, right now we are on year 14. And that's because I have the game on pause quite a lot. I think that if I would, uh, would have had the game on, you know, play, a lot more would already be in like year 115 or something like that because it's insane how much work actually is in this zoo. It's really insane. This is one of the biggest projects I have done um, since the beginning of my YouTube channel, which is 10 months ago, I believe. Uh, yeah, 10 months ago. Ooh, yeah, in April I have a YouTube channel that's a year old. I need to do something special for that. So if you have an idea for something special, um, do that. <laughs> I guess I'm not sure yet, but you know, if you have any ideas, you know, let me know. Also, if you have any ideas on what you'd like to see in the zoo, or if you, or um, if you have any tips or tricks, you know, let me know. Or anything you're like, oh, you did this really well. Let me know as well because I do enjoy reading those comments. Also, if you have ideas for, um, you know, basically anything, just let me know in the comments. Also, if you want to see more of the actual habitat building or the surroundings buildings, because I'm never quite sure what you guys enjoy because I don't really watch a lot of youtube myself i mean like i do watch a lot of youtube but i watch other things on youtube i don't really watch a lot of planet zoo videos on youtube because i don't want to um like i, I want to get inspired but i want to get inspired by real zoos and stuff i don't want to get inspired by other youtubers because i always feel like people are going to attack me because they feel like i stole an idea of someone um so i 
generally don't watch a lot of other YouTubers except when, you know, I get videos sent to me. I'm like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll check it out for you and I'll, I'll say what I think of it. But really, watching other YouTubers, I don't really do that. Except for Palsley, I do watch Palsley because, you know, he's great. Um, but otherwise, I don't really watch it. <laughs> Just because I'm really afraid that people will be mean to me. And I'm very fragile and I don't think I can handle that. Wow, <laughs> that was just a very moment of truth, so I'll ignore that. So here we are making sure that the rock works, looks, you know, pretty. Same with the, the, the P file habitat. Um, I love, I love nature. If there was like a, a planet Botanica um, with only gardens, that would be amazing for me because I love that. I love landscaping. The one thing, like I was thinking about this just now, and I think the thing I would want in Planet Zoo, everyone is screaming like aviaries and birds. I want butterflies. I mean, I want to build a butterfly garden. That That's just... I feel like that would be so cool. I want butterflies in the game. Okay, if any of the developers of Planet Zoo are watching this, um, can we please have butterflies in our next DLC? I mean, how amazing would that be? I mean, I love butterflies. I love the butterfly garden as well. On my Instagram, link in the description down below, by the way, um, there are pictures of me at the zoo... Uh, in the butterfly garden and it's this really amazing blue butterfly and they they you know usually you can't really uh, make pictures of them because they move a lot and they never sit still but this time he was just sitting on the bench and i was actually afraid it died because it was sitting so still but it didn't so i have this beautiful blue butterfly on this bright yellow bench with a green background it's amazing i love the color combination on that you know, if you know anything about me, I love colors and I love uh, combining colors and experimenting with that. So, I mean, that picture is just, you know, the highlight of my year. That sounded really sad, but you guys know what I mean. Anyways, um, right now we are making sure that they, um, what was the name again? The little crocodiles actually have, you know, a shelter because it said they had hot shelter, but I don't really think like... Uh, a bridge counts as heart shelter. I wanted to give them a cool cave. And here we are working on the terrain paint, which I promised I would do more often, and I did. And the rest of the habitat actually didn't really need a lot of fixing. I felt like it was better for these animals to have like more of a natural, um, you know, habitat. I wanted to give it something natural because it is a very natural zoo and I didn't want to overly build in it because we already have a lot of pathways going over it, you know, and stuff like that. And I really felt like this way you would see the animals good. Anyways, we are almost heading into the cinematics, so thank you guys very much for watching. And if you haven't already, make sure to like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It helps the YouTube algorithm, it helps my channel grow, you know, etc, etc. I do all those things. Anyways, guys, I will hope to see you on the next episode. Bye, guys.